So hi guys, what you all up to? Um, this isn't how I was going to start this video, but wow, I'm just watching um, this morning. I don't know what to say. There's this little boy on it um, and his parents have sort of chose to um, have his legs and arms cut off due to meningitis. Uh, wow, what, what would you do guys? God, I don't know what I don't know. It's our decision that one, isn't it? We're gonna have a little discussion about that, I think, later. Um, I don't think my views will be quite what uh, the public expect. Right. So anyway, this upload um, is the second video in the uh, in the series that I've sort of added to my uh, with my revamp on my channel that I'm slowly doing, um, and it's the uh, part of the collection for um, the Sheffield Massage Parlour history. And I, yes, I don't know if I, I did mention it. Don't know if you all you you've seen that video yet, but um and um it's gonna have sort of like topics of obviously the sex industry, but I'm gonna sort of tell you what the first massage parlor was in Sheffield. Um, I'm gonna give you the um the the, the story of um the Amiga when that one, that was raided, um which was quite one of one of the old ones as well. That is. Um, I'm going to tell you about Burns of Paradise that got burnt down. Um, I'm going to tell you about uh, kittens uh, when they got done for uh, you know all the trafficking and stuff. So yeah, I, I think you'll I think you'll be um, yeah I think you'll like it. Um, so but we'll kick this one off. Uh, and this is a bit of a serious one. Um, it's a it's a murder one. Now uh, the lady I'm speaking to speak about um, it has been solved by the way, but I just thought you know. With, with the topic being of obviously you know the history of, of um in sheffield about the, the red light district and the massage parlors um i thought this is definitely one that should be in so uh, her name was joe and uh, she was 70 years old and uh, let me just put my glasses on they're like a teacher then don't um and she ran a number of businesses she was a you know a bit of business woman and uh, one of her businesses was a massage parlor um she used to work herself years ago and then she got to the stage where she sort of ran her own uh, and bought her own in the end. Um, so good on her, good on her. Um, so anyway, she uh, got she owned a massage parlor in Attercliffe. Um, hang on, guys, come on. She uh, ran. A, um, she bought this um, club called. Uh, well, it was an old pub actually. It's where City Sauna used to be, um, but originally Jill owned it, and it was called um, Club One Sixty. And she, um, you know, she she got all the business going. It was a nice little gold mine. She put a mark on it and everything. And then she sort of got this, and she decided she wanted something, you know, something new, um, you know. And she sold it to um, her friend, which is Kath. Um, and um, Kath obviously changed the name to City Sauna. Um, it's the infamous City Sauna now, isn't it? Um, you know, it's been sent off two documentaries. And um, before they moved down the road a bit, it, you know, they was sort of. Like I said, they what did the British brothel, didn't they? Um, and I can't remember what the, what the other one was. But um, yeah, check them out. They um, they're okay. They're good. You'll like them, I think. Anyway, um, so she only moved a few yards down the road, and she bought a little gold mine again uh, called Fantasia. And uh, she, you know, she put a mark on it. She got it nice and busy, and she she um, that that was her little you know project. And before the unfortunate happened. And um, her neighbours sort of found her this in the morning about seven o'clock one day um, and she was in a pool of blood um, in a, on the living room floor and uh, a little dog was sort of under the window in the basket where they'd clearly been all night sort of cowering and a little bit scared. You see, she'd not got any sort of kids um, or family really. And so the dogs were sort of, you know, her furry babies. Um, so, let's start now the guy who actually did it he was called lee and um the way he sort of got his money uh when he you know once gyro would run out he would go and knock on doors um and sort of blag money basically saying he's run out of petrol um you know th think that really i think you know he broke down or he'd run out of petrol or, or just generally asked for money maybe to do our jobs it doesn't say but um, and he actually stabbed her 70 times, really overkill. Um, and, and normally, they, when they do sort of really overkills, 
it, they actually know the person, don't they? You know, it might be an ex-partner or something. But no, they, they didn't know each other. They lived in the same in the same area, uh, but they, they didn't know each other. Um, so, and it happened at the door, on the doorstep, more or less. And um, he, he had moved the body. That's why she was sort of found in the living room. And I think he just moved her, really, because he didn't want sort of, you know, less chance of her being found, to be, to be honest. Um, so anyway, after he sort of killed her, um, he he went through her bag, uh, took what money she had. She only had about two hundred pounds in cash, and he also took a little car, which was a red Audi ZT, um, and drove. You know, drove back. Um, he had um, a friend. Um, he was called Andrew Ashley, and he sort of got twenty previous and thirty-five previous convictions that had taken him to prison. So he had twenty that sort of he served out in 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 in, in the community, like maybe CS or probation. We got 35 jail um, convictions, where, you know, 35 offences that he sent to jail. Um, and one happens to be stolen goods and he sold his car to him. Um, so that's how he's involved, so it doesn't make sense soon. Um, and Lee went on, sold the, uh, sold it, no, sold the car and, and brought, um, obviously bought drugs to smoke. Uh, he cut, a couple of mates he smoked it with uh, in his, you know, at his home where he did live with his partner and, um, and, and daughter. Um, one of his friends did actually say um, he, that Lee had actually gone on to say that he'd done something really bad that night, but he didn't sort of divulge any more. Um, now, the neighbours, back back where Jill is, um, but the neighbours, they all said, you know, you could set the, you, your clock by Jill. You know, she, she was like a creature of habit, so to speak. You know, 10pm, um, you know, she, she, the lights would be off, the curtains would be drawn, TV off. You know that sort of thing came in at the time, at the same time every day. That sort of thing. Um, so, with the sort of the lights not being turned off at the set the right time, you know, because that Lee was there sort of rummaging around and all this was happening unbeknown to the neighbours. Um, at seven o'clock in the morning, uh, these two couples who were, lived across the road sort of got their heads together and said, you know, something doesn't seem right over there. Um, you know, Jill's light didn't go off. Um, you know, the telly was, was kept on because obviously you could see the lot didn't you know the light. Um, through through the curtains or the window, uh, you know, I'm not sure. It doesn't actually say if the curtains are drawn or not. Um, so about seven a.m. they went to investigate, and this couple they managed to get into the house. Um, so I presume the door wasn't locked, and um, they they walked into the room where, like I briefly said earlier, um, where Lee had actually moved her, dragged her to. Um, they found her in a pool of blood, um, and found a little dogs under the windows in the basket, sort of shaking and and, and very scared. Um, you know, well, obviously, I would imagine they didn't want to leave the, the, the owner, you know, because, yeah, I like to think that anyway. Um, so, where did we get to? On my list. So, anyway, there was a, po a post-mortem, um, and um, they did, you know, they said that she had been moved, like I said, because it, you know, oh, somebody ringing, but I don't think it, I don't think it takes it off anyway. Um, so anyway, um, he was caught quite quickly, um, and he was charged with um, with two accounts, um, two, two. Uh, what was the charges now? He was charged with sort of burglary, burglary, uh, you know, and, and obviously murder, and he, and he was remanded. Um, now, Lee um, decided. Uh, that he was going to decide he wasn't going to um, make this this easy on anybody, on the family, and he pleaded not guilty. Um, but they did this, you know, they all saw through him anyway. But uh, before we get to that bit, we're going a bit forward now. Um, the judge, you know, the, the judge said, you, you know, she was quite a strong person. She wasn't scared to sort of, you know, she'd been through a lot in, in life anyway. So a bit of confrontation to Jill wouldn't have been much. Um, and he said he thinks that's why, you know, Lee probably snapped. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because <clears throat> I would imagine uh, that, 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 that obviously we can only guess and so can the judge. Um, when, when, she, when he will have come and knocked at the door and he'll have been, you know, asking for money, she'll have told him to fuck off, basically. Um, you know, and he'll have been, uh, you know, getting a little bit high rate because he wants his money for his drugs, blah, blah, blah. 
Um, and she will have probably, well, she will have. She will have, you know, quite bluntly said, no, you know, go the fuck away. Um, and he says, just thinks he just snapped. Because, um, like I say, it was very, very overkill. Um, and it, she had wounds to her face, her neck, her body, um, her liver, her legs, her kidney, her lung, her spleen. You know, she, there were 70 of them. Really, really, really overkill. And, so, and some of the sad wounds, the judge was saying, that it was done after she, you know, she, she was laid helpers on the floor. You know, um, he was then, um, he said, he found guilty, because like I say, he took it to trial, so obviously it's going to be the um, the jury, isn't it? Um, he found guilty, he's going to give him the maximum he can, and the maximum where he will decide, basically, he will decide when he will be able to go for parole, because this is just barbaric, you know, it's uncalled for. You know, you just, just, you've murdered, you took somebody's life. You know, you took a loved one some, from friends. Although she had family, she had very good friends. She was very well liked, Jill. Um, and, you know, you, you, the impact statement that, that somebody made, uh, a friend of theirs made, herbs are made, you know, said so that, uh, you know, she was like a little mother hen. Um, you know, she, she, she wasn't like, it's, you know, 70 getting the pension and stuff. You know, she was, she was like a funky 17-year-old, 17, 17 and she was like your mum, she, she looks after everybody, um, you know. But, oh, it's not nice, is it? So, the, uh, they only took three hours, the jury, to decide um, to guilty or not guilty. And, of course, they came back with guilty. Um, one second, guys. And the other guy also got found, he found got not guilty of murder, obviously, because he, he wasn't there. Um, but he, um, you know, for uh, handling stolen goods in regards to the car. Um, it's, when I read this in the newspapers, when I sort of getting all the, you know, what, the facts that I could. Because I knew of Joe, but I didn't know her personally. Um, uh, one of my best, well, best friends at the time who I used to work with, she was very close to Joe. Uh, she used to, you know, she's worked for her and stuff, and worked with her as well. Um, but I, I, I never sort of worked for Jill. Um, I just sort of seen her, you know, when she, she'd come and speak to um, other massage parlours owners. And, you know, when I worked at City, she, you know, she's cast, 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 the owner was, of City was a real, really close best friend, like best friend, so to speak. Um, but I know she was very well liked. And... Um, all it says in the paper, you know, doesn't the business owner, it's a massage parlour owner, you know, and I, I, I always think, God, it, does it matter what somebody did, if they did it in the sex industry, you know, should it matter? You know, does that mean that they're, they're less, it means less, you know, is it not as bad because they're in the sex industry? And, you know, oh, another, another one bites the dust, so to speak. You know, we're, we're all human no matter what we've done or what we're doing. Uh, not that, I mean, obviously it's not even, to me, it's just, it's a normal job. I know some of you guys will think I'm, you know, don't don't agree and some of you will agree. And that's why I love all you guys, because you put the honest opinions and there's no sort of bitterness, you know. You can say, I don't agree with you and, and, it, and it's great and then on my next subject you'll agree. I love it. I love you all. So, this is the... Uh, Unfortunately, the sad story of Jill, um, who got murdered by, listen to this one, because I've kept this to the last, he was a crackhead, guys. He was a crack and heroin addict. That's the drugs that he was on. Um, so, guys, she was taken, oh, actually, just add this bit in. The reason he said he was at Jill's house was it said that he had come to draw her dogs. So, sort of do an artist, um, you know, sketch of her dogs. Which they didn't believe, obviously. So, guys, um, I'm also going to do an extra special, special video for you next week. And I told you that I wanted to go on sort of open night, mic night. Well, I've contacted a few in Sheffield uh, through Facebook and joined some groups. Said that, you know, what I want to do. And I'm going to give you... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> I'm going to give you a sneak preview of my routine. So I will give a content warning before it goes on. 
But I'm going to prop this up for you now, guys. Hope you enjoy it. And it's great to be back. I'm back on form now, I promise you guys. Love you loads.